For more on China's film industry, my colleague Rochelle Kovo spoke to Afro Zhao Wang. Afro Zhao Wang, she's the host of Loud Murmurs. That's a Chinese language podcast about American pop culture. Afro is also a writer that's focusing on culture, the U.S. and China. And she starts off by discussing China's box office receipts over the festive period. The box office this year is 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 phenomenal compared to uh, really deemed last year. Last year, the film industry in China basically uh, was like a dipping point. A lot of like big production companies was at the edge of even having a bankrupt. A lot of bad stories happened last year, but this year uh, we see a lot of great filmmakers are making their movies and we're on the big screen. People are loving it. For example, Hi Mom, uh, the famous comedian Jia Ling's first ever picture already gained uh, $600 million uh, uh, box office input, so which is like extraordinary. Uh, and also Detective Chinatown 3, a super uh, funny and a popular comedian, uh, comedy franchise also gained more than 600 uh, billion, uh, sorry, 600 million uh, dollars box office. Um, and those, those numbers are just really, really extraordinary just compared to last year. Uh, you know, uh, movie critics says it's, it's like compared days and night. And wow. uh, this year is the daytime, is the, the, the happy time, yeah. So then obviously a lot of pent up demand there. Were people gravitating more towards comedies to sort of lighten the mood or what sort of films were people really interested in? Oh yeah, so, um, so Chinese New Year film, it's a very specific genre in general. It's called He Sui Pian, meaning that people in this particular time, they want to celebrate the New Year, they want to be happy, be joyful. Uh, so a lot of the Chinese New Year films are particularly uh, talking or like focusing on family uh, affection or, you know, like your connection with your uh, people around you, your relatives, or, or just, you know, pure comedies uh, about, you know, some silly or joyful uh, events happening. So it, in this like very particular period of time, Chinese people love to watch something that makes them laugh and make them, you know, come together and enjoy this time. Well, goodness knows we could, we could all use a laugh at, at this point in time. Um, now, what were you seeing in terms of the amount of homegrown films versus some of the domestic offer? I'm sorry, versus some of the international offerings? Yeah, so it's really unlike the past few years because, you know, Hollywood trem was trembling a lot uh, during, like, you know, when the pandemic really, like, hit the U.S. So uh, ever since the California started its first phase of stay-at-home order, uh, Hollywood basically shut down for a few months. Uh, and it's not uh, after, I, I guess, nine months ago, how to basically re resume uh, to start doing uh, other productions, but in a very limited scale. Uh, we've constantly heard uh, news about, you know, a famous director, famous actor Tom Cruise uh, furiously yelling to his crew at the Hollywood, uh, Hollywood production saying, you know, we have to obey uh, the protocol. We have to, we have to follow whatever uh, measures can help us prevent the virus from happening. Uh, so, you know, like stories like that are happening. The, the industry, the whole industry is indeed, um, I believe, gradually changing because of the pandemic in the U.S. Uh, although right now it's, it, it's in a good shape now uh, compared to last few months, uh, but still a lot of young people who are pursuing their dreams uh, in Hollywood decided to go back home uh, because the industry itself by nature uh, lack a, a really good you know, insurance system. So, you know, like there's no uh, official statistics saying how many, how many people left Hollywood uh, to, uh, to, to basically stop their career, uh, but this is like very sad and um, to see that um, a lot of people this year um, like is struggling just to produce films in general, yeah. And I think a lot of people have to appreciate just how many jobs the movie industry supports, not just yeah. actors and people in production, but you also have the cinemas, you have people involved in makeup, you have exactly. the vendors who provide the food for a lot of these places. Yeah. Do we know in terms of the vaccination rollout in China, where people who work in some of these big industries, um, entertainment industries, where they might rank? Uh, you mean like in the US or in the China? So for China. Oh, for China. So right now, the China vaccination plan is slowly rolling out. Uh, and my mom, as a, a, a person who works in the medical industry, uh, she is a, she's a, like the 
pretty much the first batch who get vaccinated. And uh, really, really unlikely here in the U.S. where, you know, the elderly get vaccinated first. China is quite rolling out a super different plan. And that plan is basically uh, sort of case by case. And also the, uh, the brand of vaccination is quite different here and compared to, to China. So I'm just really, it's kind of fascinating to see, you know, how the two, two countries handle their vaccination rollout.